You can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to <laughs> Relax. I'm Colleen Ballinger. And I'm Eric. Eric's my husband. Thanks so for I, saying that. So I hear. Thanks for saying that. I've heard that. Um, I needed that boost of confidence. Today. And you're listening to Relax, the oh, podcast where podcast. we just talk about whatever the heck we want. But we've got a very interesting topic for today, guys. Big episode. Big, big, big ep. Big it's a big special ep. ep of the potty. Yes. But first, we got to talk about who needs to relax or should we talk about how epic this potty is? Should we stop well, saying I, potty? I was worried because I called it a potty and you just kind of didn't even react. You just kind of let it go. Yeah, I know. I, I kind of liked you were it. You into it? Should we call this potty? Should we change the name you from relax to potty? You had an idea the other potty? day. You were like, we should have named the podcast Colleen's Potty. I, did I say Colleen's Potty? Eric and Colleen's Potty? Eric and Colleen's Potty. Colleen and Eric's Potty. Yeah, our potty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should have called that that. Potty um, talk. Yeah, so we do have a fun episode for you guys today. I guess I'll just jump into that before we say who needs to relax, guys, okay? So um, today's episode is going to be all about pregnancy, but uh, before we Oof. jump into that, I want to let you know that we kind of have a schedule this month, and I, I mean, sort of. We're building the excitement. We're building the excitement. We want you guys episodes. to be excited about future episodes, because a lot of people ask, like, oh, when are you going to do the next haters episode and all that kind of stuff, and, and you guys have sent in a lot of fun ideas, so I just wanted to give you a heads up of what to look forward to this month of April. Happy Easter. I Happy. It's April. I guess Easter already happened by the How time. How is it April? Seasons. I know it's really weird, but uh, today we're going to be talking all things pregnancy. Um, uh, you know, are, are we going to get pregnant again? What was my pregnancy like? A lot of people want to know Eric's pers perspective on the pregnancy. I'm going to torture Eric quite a bit today. Yeah, I don't really know too much about what you have planned. I'm kind oh, of flying blind in this You are one. going to be in pain physically today. For real, I'm not kidding. Oh, yeah. What? Eric's gonna sing us a song today. We have a truck of the day. Like it's a big episode. We got a lot to talk about. Whoa. Okay. That's a lot. Um, so we have a lot. Uh, and then uh, just so you guys know, next week we're going to be watching the second episode of Haters Back Off and talking about behind the scenes, little sneak peeks and and secrets. What's the second? What happens in the second episode? The second episode, um, uh, Miranda goes to the church and uh, sings yeah. and is in the choir and all that. Oh, I'm excited mm -hmm. to. Yeah. We haven't seen these episodes in years. Years, years, so years. That'll really be fun. fun. So that's next week. The week after that, the third week of April, we're going to be doing Relax the Musical. That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a musical episode. Are you going to tell me any more about that? No, uh, not yet. I and like the, the sound of that. And Relax the final, the and the final, um, episode this month, we are going to be doing a meet the in-laws episode. And I'm going to leave that up to your imagination as well. Um, but they're all really fun. I have a lot of stuff planned for this month, but before we get into all the fun stuff, lovey, who needs to relax this week in your opinion? Well, Colleen. Yes. You know, I like, um, I like that. I think people can, and things can be different can go their own way, be creative, uh, you know, like nonconformity. Like I, I appreciate all that. Okay. <laughs> uh, what? Be your own thing. Okay. Uh, but when your hair mm -hmm. grow out. When your hair grow Don't out. Don't grow in. Oh, ingrown hairs. Woo, I was very confused as to where you were going with that I one. also confused myself I was like, is that. he telling me to grow out my bangs? Like, what is he saying? I um, think... That yeah, if, if you're a hair, Oof, you don't need to hairs. be different. Grow out. Like, where? What are you hiding? What are you? Are you shy? What are you? What are you afraid of? Why don't you just break through shy, that skin? Just go out, enjoy it. I enjoy life. Say hi to the world. Be hair. It's the lazy hairs. They're they lazy. Wanna, yeah, they don't want to push through the skin. They're like, ugh, that's too much work. I'm just gonna stay under here. Well, what it's if they push through warm. the skin? But then they, they like, they're like, nope. And they go back. 2021. In. I'm going back in. Yeah, no good. Ingrown hairs are the worst. And I'd be lying if I said I've never like dug a hole in my body Ugh. trying to get one out. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. That's why I was like trying to be like more uh, ambiguous about it, and because uh, I like literally just wanted to say it and get it over with. I didn't want to like talk about. Yeah. Also. Yeah. Been there. You've you've done that. Who hasn't? Come on. Relax. Relax. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Ingrown hairs need to relax. Do you have any good ingrown time. hair stories? <laughs> I don't want to say that. that 
is the worst interview question. I think you just found the Wait, worst interview that, question of all time. But I think I, is this the first question you've never been asked in an interview? <laughs> I, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. <laughs> Although I have talked, I've had this conversation with my sister before. Like we've talked about ingrown hairs. Uh. Because I will say this, we're not going to go into detail because it's gross and everyone's going to stop listening right now. Ingrown hairs. Yeah, I've, I've lost worst. the ability to swallow. I know, for me all too. This I'm like cotton mouth right now. Right. Yeah, we're not going to talk about um, ingrown hairs anymore, but I, I will say the satisfaction once you get rid of an ingrown hair is quite magical. That's That was what I was going to say. I'm not going to go into any details about any stories, one but like. That was like very long. Love? We like, said we're not going to go into it had, details about it. Like this. a spring, it had curled. Oh my God. Yes. And <laughs> we're not talking about this anymore. We're moving on to my relax, which is going oh. to make you very angry when I bring this up again. Okay. Again. Well, because you experienced this in real time. So we took an incredible vacation as I would call it a weekend getaway as Eric would call it to a ranch, um, last weekend, uh, or last, I don't know when it was, we took a, a, a getaway to a ranch. It was magic. Last it was, weekend, yeah. was it last weekend? Yes. I don't remember. Um, anyway, it was magical. We got to hang out with incredible animals. Like I held baby sheep, a baby alpaca. There were goats that we got to run with. 127 and goats. It was incredible. It was a magical, wonderful experience. If you want to see, you can go check out on my vlog channel. It was, we were just deep in the mountains, no service, far from everything and everyone just experiencing a ranch, an old historic, hundreds of years old ranch with incredible animals. It was amazing. However, the person I think needs to relax this week is the boy who tried to murder my husband with rocks. So, oh, did I just did I hit a nerve? I love? didn't know what you were going to say. <laughs> I was trying to think, okay, this week, is there I feel anyone like his parents that, should, uh, yeah, his parents need to relax. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not going to parent shame. I'm not going to anyone shame. I'm just going to say the facts of the situation that happened. So at this incredible ranch oasis we went to, there was a lake and you could take out boats. So we you should out. say pond is very little. It was it's very small. Pond. Yes. Very. It was very small. It's like a hundred yards across. Very small, but you could take out a canoe. You could take out a rowboat. You could go fishing on it, like whatever. So Eric took out a canoe and I played with Flynn on the shore with rocks and threw rocks and played in the dirt and whatever. And there was this other boy who was also staying on the property at the same time as us, not near us. Like they were staying very far from us on the property, but a, a family. And there was a boy, probably maybe 12 ish, I would say. And I was hanging out with Flynn. So I didn't notice this, but Flynn wanted to go on the boat. So Eric went out on the canoe and he came back to shore so that he could take Flynn and I on a paddle boat out in the water. And we get in the paddle boat and Eric is perturbed. He is, he's, I'm on edge. There is smoke coming out of his ears for real. And he was clearly upset. And he said, that boy is throwing rocks at me. There was a boy on the shore throwing rocks into the water. And I was like, no, he's not. He's just throwing rocks in the water. Like he's not throwing well, rocks what at he, you. What he was doing was like, kind of skipping rocks, kind of just chucking, you know, that kind of kid that's just chucking big rocks into water. into water. But you could tell he was kind of trying to get it as close to me in the mm -hmm. canoe as he could. And as I was paddling into you and Flynn, to, a rock whizzed over my head and, mm -hmm. and splashed behind me. And I was like, you gotta be, and just, and I just stared at him and he looked away, but I like, I couldn't, I just assumed accident no you did not i did because you were you said he was throwing them at you and i was like there's well, it no was just, way it was just strange because like, like he just kind of kept looking at me and throwing rocks and then like when i would look away a rock would land like kind of close to the canoe and i was i'm like wait a minute is he is he trying to hit me with rocks so, like we're the only people there it's yeah. just us and this one lone 11 to 12 year old so i get in the paddle boat with flynn and we're in the paddle boat and eric's rowing the boat and all of a sudden, a huge rock splashes up, like probably two inches from our boat right by Flint. And so my mama bear instincts were like, oh, no, because Eric was like, that kid's throwing rocks. At me. I was like, no, he's just throwing rocks in the water. Relax. Like at first I thought you needed to relax. But then he did it. And I was like, that was so obvious that he was throwing rocks. At it was so I mean, it was a pond, but it was a, it's like it was big. Like there's so much space to throw a rock and it was yeah, very yeah, obvious. Yeah, he yeah. threw it at us. He was trying to hit us. And so I looked at him and I said, can you please not throw rocks at us? Like I shouted this across the pond lake and he goes, what? Uh, uh. <laughs> like, like <laughs> throws his arms in there. Like I didn't do that. Like it was essentially what he was saying with his grunt. Um, 
And then he just kind of like kicked the dirt and walked away. But it was very obvious that's what he was doing. But it was shocking to me. I never did stuff like that as a kid. I didn't throw rocks at other and humans I, I to try to hurt yelled, them. I yelled, where are your parents? Because I wanted to, then I was, I was going to speak to them. But I don't know what we would have said to them. Like, he's throwing rocks at us. And they would have been like, no, he's not. You know, it would have been a pointless it conversation. Like it he been stopped like after good, that. I felt, I did feel bad for him though. Because like, here's the thing. Eric and I or with Flynn, it's like the three of us as a family, and I don't know their family situation at all, but my mind makes made up excuses for him. So my mm-hmm. mind is like, he's out here alone at this awesome place, but he's not even with his family. Like, I don't know where his family is at right now. He's And every time we've seen him, he's been alone, like playing with dirt and rocks. And like, he's... He, he's bored. He wants someone to play with and he's being ignored. So he's trying to like get someone's attention just cause he's bored. It seemed you know? attention and, driven. Yeah. yeah. And so I, you know, we quickly made excuses for him and then we felt bad for him. But like at, in the moment, I would say that kid of all the people I, um, have encountered this week, that kid probably needs to relax. That's what I was going to say. I'm rooting for him. I hope he, yeah, I hope he's okay. I hope figures I, it out. I hope I didn't. I was not, I, we were not rude though. I literally was like, can you please not throw rocks at us? Like I said it very nicely, but it like, he was very upset that I said that to him. That was his response. He was very angry at me. And was threw so, his yeah, at it me. was the worst lie. Um, anyway, guys, uh, Eric wrote a song that he's going not to really. sing. really. Well, apparently. he. So Eric likes to take your reviews on the Apple podcast app and he reads them, which I'm not brave enough to do. And he reads the comments and he writes songs about them. And the last one he did was all about how hot he is and how all the comments talked about how he's so sexy. I didn't, and how, I, I didn't am know. the reason that's we got was one written. star. I just pulled from the, uh, from the reviews on Apple podcasts and that's, that's what was mm-hmm. there. So we are going to get to hear the beautiful vocal stylings of Mr. Eric Stocklin as he apparently does this again. I don't know what's about to happen. I'm very excited about it. But before we hear your beautiful musical stylings, I cannot wait to hear. Thanks. Um, I think we should say thank you to our first ad of the day, which is Helix. If you've been following me for a long time, you might remember that I've had back pain and shoulder pain. I've complained about that for a long time. Um, And one of the many things that I think I know, one of the many things, though, that I think has helped has been getting a new mattress. I think a mattress is really important for for fixing um, back, shoulder, neck ache problems. And this is something that has helped me a lot is our Helix mattress. So Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete and matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Why would you buy a mattress made for someone else? Hello? With Helix, you're getting a mattress that you know will be perfect for the way that you sleep. Everybody is unique and Helix knows that. So they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, and firm mattresses. And they're great for cooling you down if you sleep hot. They have all different types of wonderful mattresses to make sure it's perfect for you. And they even have a Helix Plus Size mattress for plus size folks. We took the Helix quiz and got matched with the medium firm mattress because we are side sleepers. We both are. That's butt to butt. We're butt to butt kind of kind of folk. Uh, we love it. It's a huge upgrade for us from what we used to have. And like I said, it has helped tremendously with our neck and back and ache pains. My roommate so freshman year of college slept on his back. Oh, Whoa. I thought it was so strange. Oh yeah. I just thought it was so strange. Like, like a vampire. Yeah, no, but you Every know, night. I feel like there's a lot of tummy sleepers out there and we are not that you and I always sleep on our side. That's fine always. for them. Not, yes. I don't even, I don't understand that either. I mean, I, you know, this is a pregnancy episode. When I was pregnant, everyone was like, isn't the worst you can't sleep on your stomach when you're pregnant. And I was like, no, <laughs> Why would I sleep on my stomach? Who sleeps on their stomach? You just well, didn't sleep. If you do sleep on your stomach, Helix has got a mattress for you. So anyway, it's it's been awesome getting to watch the unboxing videos from so many of you who've also found the Helix mattress of your dreams because the unboxing of the mattress is very exciting. It's very shocking how they get that huge mattress in a tiny little box. So if you're looking for a mattress, you just take the quiz, you order the mattress that you're matched to, and the mattress comes right to your door, shipped for free. You don't ever need to go to a mattress store again. You know Helix is great because they were awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 and by GQ and Wired Magazine. Just go to helixsleep.com slash RCE, take their two minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. 
but you will. I promise. Helix is offering up to $200 off all Whoa. mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash RCE. Go check it out. That is helixsleep.com slash RCE. Yeah. It's Helix RCE. I would buy that on the radio. Um, speaking of singing beautiful songs, love, it's your time to shine. Let's hear I, it. I'm nervous about this one. Why? This one is a little bit different than the ones I have done before. The The ones I've done before have kind of been just like pulling a different, maybe they've been a, a, a themed slightly, mm-hmm. um, but like it's just been a bunch of different reviews. This time is a little bit different because I... Um, you know, I'll ask people to leave like if they're if they're feeling like we deserve it, like a good review on Apple Podcasts, and then I'll try and put lyrics to it. But this time, I got stuck on one that I mm-hmm. couldn't believe was an actual review of our podcast. Okay, I guess I guess it kind of made sense because um, in a previous episode, I had talked about uh, me having a phobia of getting hit in the throat, mm-hmm. like it's just like a sensitive mm-hmm. uh, body part for me in my mind, like I, I, I stress out about it mm-hmm. and it's vulnerable, uh, vulnerable words. You can, vulnerability. You can do it. No, I, I think it. you added a syllable, <laughs> but it's okay. We know what you're saying. <laughs> you're all vulnerable. Uh, it's like Flynn trying I to say the word. Say it. <laughs> um, so I, I kind of stuck on this review and kind of like obsessed with it. And so it's, it's just the one okay. review. So this uh, is going to be a short has song, now apparently. It's become uh, a song, kind of, I guess. Um, Fun. Okay, do you want to get your I'm guitar? I'm going to get my guitar. Uh, tell them a story. Uh... And we'll just cut to when you have your guitar, okay. love. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now I have a guitar. Um, so for this one, mm-hmm. I was wondering mm-hmm. if you would, and don't kill me. I would never. Mm. I wouldn't. If you would participate. Okay. I need Uzina. I hear in my head when I was you want me fiddling to, with this, I, I hear Uzina. To a song I don't know. Yes. Is that something you can, is your training well, allowed for that? You, you are trained. You do have a degree in this, right? Not in Uina. Is it an associate's degree? My degree is not is in Uzina in songs I don't know. Ah, okay. But um, I, c- I can try at some point. And just come in with the Uzinas whenever you're feeling it. Oh, jeez Louise. Or just do it all the time. I don't know. My older sister Whacked me in the throat With a hockey stick When I was only five years old Now I have Irrational throat fears (laughs) Well, first off page and a two we appreciate your five star review but wait (laughs) sorry your older sister slashed you in the throat with a hockey stick i mean damn you were only five years old i'd say you actually have understandably rational throat fears (laughs) (laughs) i'd agree with that (laughs) well now i'm stuck It's hard to move on I was supposed to read and write About other reviews for this song But I'm left wondering Just picking my guitar Did you need stitches? Or did it leave a scar? We know our shit We watch forensic files. Did the partial prints and DNA match the hockey stick profile? (laughs) And whose hockey stick was this? Was it yours or was it hers? Has the evidence been pawned off to a play it against sports? Did you have it coming? Were you being a little bitch? No offense. Did you tattle a tale? Like a little sister snitch Or did you do That annoying thing Where you're copying Stop copying Everything she says Did you feel pain Or did it feel Good inside 
that your older sister had somehow made you feel alive. She was their first child, back then their only child, the princess. And then you came along and stole the spotlight and her hand-me-downs and the attention. She now has to share a room with bunk beds and the attention, the attention, the attention. But did she braid your hair, drive you and your friends to the mall? To spend hours on the phone When you just needed to talk Was she in your wedding? And did she make a drunken toast About a childhood accident At the hockey goal post After all of these years Can you forgive her for your Irrational throat fear? Wow, Lovey, that's a good one. That was that's very weird. Really intense. I'm having a weird time. I feel like I I missed half of it because I was like so concerned about finding a place to ooh and ah. I feel like I ruined your song. I feel like you should not have had me singing because it was just distracting. I, I like thought it was no. It it's, it sounded like what I was hearing in my head while I was writing it. Well, I really liked it. I thought it was glorious, and I'm so sorry to whoever wrote that uh, comment that your sister whacked you in the throat. It just goes to show you, like, you leave a comment. You never leave, know. Leave a review. You might get a whole song about that, like, kind of dives into your uh, childhood neuroses and trauma uh, from me. Yeah. And my perspective. And you could even get some off-pitch oohs and ahs from me in the process. Uh, what a gift. What a, what a blessing. <laughs> get rid uh, of that guitar, lovey. Okay. That was beautiful. I loved it so much. Um, I can't wait to hear the next one. You're writing another one, right? Writing more? Yeah. Leave more reviews. I, I, I we'll do more. I want to. I don't know if anybody likes it. I love it. them. It's I amazing. I think it's very strange. We're gonna, but we it's, should uh, do an album. We should like have said, an album of your comments. Like I said, it's cathartic for me. Uh, yeah, and eventually I'll have enough for an, an EP. Album. Oh my gosh, we're doing it. Okay, so let's talk pregnancy, guys. Okay, so instead of just talking random stuff this episode, we actually have a topic, and it is pregnancy. I feel like this is one of the number one things I get questions about my pregnancy. Am I going to get pregnant again? Are we going to have more kids? Um, there's so many questions I get from you guys about pregnancy and about us being parents. And so I thought we would dedicate an episode to it. I hope you guys enjoy and I hope you don't mind. One of the number one questions I have seen about pregnancy in general and something a lot of people have had a lot of interest in is your perspective on pregnancy. So just terror. I know. <laughs> We're going to dive into that in Feeling one second, worthless? but first I want to just give an overview in case somehow someone listening or watching this podcast right now does not know our history with pregnancy. Have you even pregnancy. talked about your pregnancy online at all? Shut up. <laughs> so I, um, I obviously vlog my whole life and I vlogged my experience, uh, with pregnancy and, um, it, I hated it. There was nothing about it that I enjoyed. I thought it was awful, miserable. I was very grateful. I got to experience it. I'm so happy that that has, is a part of my life. I'm so glad I got to grow Flynn in my body. I think that is so cool. And I feel like more of a powerful woman than I ever thought I could because I went through that, but it was extremely miserable and very painful. And I was very open and honest about that online, which I got a lot of hate for. Um, and so, uh, we went through that together and then we had awesome Flynn. And then this year I was pregnant and I lost the baby. And so I've experienced pregnancy twice in very different ways. And, um, Just that out there. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk so, about we'll talk about it when you do. I've I've always been very open and honest with my experiences in life. Um, I'm different than that, and Eric is very different. So I think that's why people are so interested. And and me too. I I will say that Eric was the most incredible partner anyone could dream of during pregnancy and in general in life. But with my pregnancy, I every single day, at least once a day, was like, "Whoa, I am so lucky to have him." He was. Oh. He was so amazing. I mean, just so sweet and selfless and just wanted to make sure I was taken care of and just took care of everything so that I didn't have to and held me when I cried and brought me breakfast in bed every morning, made sure I had the vitamins that I, I mean, he was. I don't make you smoothies a, every day. Every morning because I had an iron deficiency when I was pregnant and would faint constantly. Um, oh my God. All the time. So he would bring me smoothies full of um, spinach 
and peanut butter, sort of protein and banana and all this and, and a lot of protein in there because, uh, I don't know. You just wanted something in my tummy, but I gained a lot of weight. I th- and I think a lot of it had to do with those smoothies. <laughs> you think so, really? I think, well, the thing is, protein powder you'd use to like work out, but you were putting in my smoothie, and I, all I did oh, was you were really good about cry. exercise. I, I couldn't pretty, move. Oh, no. You couldn't even walk. No. Okay. So anyway, let's get into it. I want to hear, and everyone wants to hear your perspective, your side Why? of things. I don't because it's interesting. Like I don't. They hear. I mean, they hear from me every day. Yeah. Like so. Um, how, let's start from the beginning. Okay. So I come to you. I tell you I'm pregnant with Flynn. Uh huh. And, uh, how did you feel? (laughs) (laughs) I was, I was surprised. I was very shocked. I was surprised, um, that that worked. Yeah. (laughs) That, that, you know, that that stuff worked. I didn't, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Cause it, I, I, it's not something that I ex- experienced before. Right. Um, but we did, we, we did talk about making that happen. That was a conversation we like sure, wanted. Sure. Kids and- yeah. Um, yeah, it wasn't like an accident per se, but it was, uh, but it, I don't know what it was just, uh, it was still shock. It was still, it was still, it was still so, um, so, so shocking and overwhelming. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird. There's like, if we were cars, there's like gears in you that you didn't know existed until something like that happens. You know what I mean? Like if before that happening, I wouldn't, I was like, I wouldn't be able to handle that. I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to have kids. I don't, you know, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think I'd be able to handle that. But then once it starts happening, there's like these secret gears in you that you didn't know you had and you just kind of, and they just, and you broom and you're just, mm-hmm. okay, well, what can I do? What do you need? Mm-hmm. Um, and as for me, my experience right from the beginning as a, as a, like a, 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 a bystander in all of it, you know what I mean? In this miracle that happens and, and that is you um, and him together, I'm just kind of uh, a little bit on the sidelines. And so like it, it just, I felt a little bit helpless in that respect, but also that like I, but I wanted to be, if there was any, like anything, any kind of minutia that I could be a part of that would help you help him help it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was from, I was, okay. Uh, you know, like got to get those books, like what, to, what to expect, <laughs> you know what I mean? And there's, there's lots of kind of dad books and then there was, okay, well I got the vitamins take the, you know, I'm reminding you to take vitamins, making smoothies. Mm-hmm. Uh, ca- I was always carrying lots of things. Mm-hmm. Remember you were like, cause you toured, you toured, you did like a bus tour mm-hmm. during all of this. Mm-hmm. And there was a pregnancy pillow. Mm-hmm. There was a, there was all these things. I think one so of the, much uh, accessories. There, one of the best things I feel like you did for me was well, one you were always checking to make sure I was okay. Like it, it was very selfless. Your that would be the best word to describe you during my pregnancy was selfless. But you also. Um, you never made me feel bad for those types of things. Like, I feel like it's very popular and common and I've done it. I'm guilty of this, of, um, making fun of pregnant women for like, Oh, she needs her pregnancy. Oh, she's grumpy. She's pregnant. You know, like that kind of attitude. I feel like society teaches us is okay. There's like t-shirts that say mm -hmm. like, go easy on me. My wife's pregnant. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, every like dad book, like prepping you to be a dad is like, watch out. She's a monster. Like, and, um, you never made me feel bad about like, if I needed my pregnancy pillow with me and we took an entire suitcase just had my pregnancy pillow in it, (laughs) but it was an extra suitcase you'd have to carry. It was no word about it. If, if I needed to eat in and out eight times in one day, there was no, like, are you serious? Clean. It was like, okay. Like it was, you were so, oh, nice you never hear. made me feel bad. If I had to spend so much money on stupid maternity clothes that would only fit me for a month, it, you were very good about like, you know, she's so miserable. That was really she funny. Needs. The first time we went, we went to the mall to like, cause they had like a specialty maternity clothing store. That was hysterical. Like what a fun activity to do. You were by the way, barely like not even showing yeah. like barely even showing, but it was like, there's all this stuff that you didn't even know. I didn't know a pregnancy pillow existed. Mm-hmm. Existed. I didn't know. You walk by those maternity stores mm-hmm. in the mall, like you don't even like register them. But now we were in the in one, and you were like trying on like denim jeans that then had like a skin color elastic <laughs> part, like and everything. Yeah, it was really. Mm-hmm. Those aren't great clothes, are they? 
Mm -mm. Now I have a question for you. I'm trying to think of like, you know, I, I know how you were during the whole pregnancy. So I'm like, what, what do I think might be interesting to other people? Um, one thing that I experienced, um, near the end of, I mean, I experienced a lot of things during the pregnancy, but near the end of the pregnancy, we decided to take a birthing class because everyone says you have to, you need to take a birthing class. It's really important. You take a birthing class. And so, um, Eric went and found this incredible person to come to our house and give us a private birthing class here at the house. Like he went, he went and did all the research and found someone great to come here. And, um, I, we did the birthing class and right after she left, I had a full blown, like panic attack. I was sobbing and like hyperventilating. I was freaking out and it was a horrible experience for me. And I think yeah. that everyone is different and you're told when you're pregnant, everyone has to do these things, but it's so not true. It's everyone is different and you have to do what works for you. And for me, that was the worst possible thing we could do. And I didn't know that's how I would feel. Um, but how did you feel about that birthing class? Like, what did you think of it? I thought it was, uh, just what, what a great, so much crazy stuff happened with that. But yeah, I think I got that as like a birthday gift to you. I uh-huh. was like, I arranged this whole um, birthing class. Like she's gonna do it at the house. It's going to be two days. Mm-hmm. She was supposed to come back for a second day. Mm-hmm. And we eh, like mm-hmm. X that after like the first four hour session that was, mm-hmm. she was here. Lovely woman, very mm-hmm. smart. Very good at what she does. Knew, good at what she does, knew her stuff, but it was so overwhelming and strange and at the same time, I like when arranging for her to come, you know, cause she teaches these classes, but to come to a private one at her house, I didn't say, Hey, we have two Persian cats. Are you allergic to cats? I forgot about she this. She had a full blown, I think she vomited she did vomit. in our bathroom from such an allergic reaction to the cats in the middle of like talking to us for the first hour. She just started choking and looking pale and sweating and she i was like what's up. going on she couldn't talk and then she was like i need to use your bathroom she went and threw up yeah because of our <laughs> and i, I get it i totally understand how she that. feels oh my god um, i forgot about that that's crazy yeah but then i mean what sticks out in my head about that was yes watching you totally crumble like i could see it <laughs> through your eyes i could see into your brain and i was just watching you fall apart <laughs> it was like and I was and I felt so bad because I I thought this would be helpful and because everyone says mm-hmm. like you have to do this these are the things you do but she had explicit explicit <laughs> reading materials explicit <laughs> charts pictures and, and dia diagrams of uh of things one specifically that can I talk about this yeah, like yeah, yeah. that was about uh me massaging an area so that it would be helpful for you long-term stretch it out to giving birth. Yeah. That was explicit drawings. Well, and she showed us with fingers, like not on anyone, but like showed us what she needed to do for me of hands and multiple, (laughs) not singular thumbs (laughs) doing things. I can't imagine feel great. I don't know. <laughs> and then she was like, yeah. And she was like, you lucky guy get to do, I don't, right. Wasn't yeah, she kind of yeah, like, she kind of was, she it was kinda like, like, not a sexual this thing, will be though, a fun would... date night. And I was like, what in the <laughs> world? And then she was like, kind of acting it out yeah, with she her was, hands. Uh-huh. That was the moment that I checked out. And, um, not that you wouldn't do that. If I had asked, you would have, if I had asked, you would have done it, but it was like, Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you would have, but I definitely didn't. And for, for, us, I feel like we're very similar, um, in a lot of ways, we're very different in a lot of ways, but I feel like we're very similar in how we parent and how we deal with stressful situations. We're really good partnership. And I think that in that situation, we had been through so much with the pregnancy. Yeah. I had every horrible symptom you could possibly imagine. I was in excruciating pain. It was every day there was something new. I was at the doctor for a heart issue. I was at the doctor for a liver issue. I was at the doctor cause I kept fainting. I was at the doctor cause I kept barfing. I was at the chiropractor cause my bones were all shot. Like, I mean, I was at the dentist cause my it's teeth were falling out. This episode a two-parter. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it was, I mean, it was a miserable every day. Yeah. Something horrible happened experience for nine months. And so to then take a class where they're prepping you for all the things that could happen and how to deal with them. It was to me a four hour class of someone saying, here's all the other things that are going to go wrong too. Or could. Or could go wrong or that you should be doing that you're not and i couldn't i my exercises you know all these yeah, things my the way, stress bucket yeah my anxiety bucket was already full right and she was 
dumping more into it. And I was like, I cannot, I need to just do this and just figure it out as it happens. Um, that's how I work best. And I think you do too. Like, and so I feel like then we are great once we decide we're not doing any more birthing classes. Yeah. I, th- I have this like really fond memory of that experience, like being in like this class setting with you, because it reminded me of like when you were in elementary school and like the teacher said something insane or, or, so, or something and you would be like, what? And you would look around the class and be like, did anybody else hear that? <laughs> like, this is insane. You know what I mean? And there would be that one kid, maybe if you were lucky, that was that would also be like, what? And like you would make eye contact and be like, right? This is crazy. Like, I feel like it made me feel like I'm so happy I'm with you and like that you're my partner through all of this because we looked at each other and I was like, oh, that was that look where you look around the classroom and mm-hmm. are like, what? Yeah, there is a lot of that. You know what I mean? Like that. So I I don't know. That was through as as hard as that was and crazy. Like that was a cool kind of bonding experience. And then she left Mm -hmm. having her uh, extreme allergic reaction to our cats. Mm -hmm. And you immediately Mm -hmm. burst into tears Mm -hmm. and we're having and we're breathing heavy. We're having a full like. (laughs) I know. (laughs) One of the one of the uh, count them on one hand, maybe. (laughs) <laughs> anxiety, full blown, like attacks that I've seen, uh, with you. And she was supposed to come back the next day, four hours yeah. to do. Remember when she was just laying on our floor on our back and she was just like doing like pelvis raises and yeah. things like, and we were all doing it with her. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, it was strange. It was, uh, but to each his own every there's most people I would say think that stuff is very helpful for us. It was just not, and maybe it would have, maybe it would have been if we did like not experience any trauma the whole pregnancy. <laughs> yeah. Or like, uh, um, I think it's great for planners. I think it's great for people who really want to plan and make sure they are prepped for every horrible situation that could possibly happen. But for me, I know like my brain doesn't work that way. Like I don't have room in my brain to plan for every horrible thing that could possibly happen, especially in that, in that situation. And I, I just couldn't handle it. You and just like also, to be distracted. You always said that you mm-hmm. like to be distracted and just go with it and just like figure if, it out as it happens. Figure it out as it happens. Like it's kind of like your technique with problem solving in general mm-hmm. um, and apply to this. It, and and who am I to, yeah, I just kind of sat back and watched in awe as you are, are just this kind of like miracle, amazing thing. I, I, any woman who's, uh, who's gone through a pregnancy, I, I can't imagine your, yes. your heroes. The thing that, Shit I've seen, man. <laughs> Crazy. We have some fun stories coming up very soon. Uh, but I do want to stop for a second and say thank you to our next sponsor. We love this one. Guys, it's HelloFresh. And I'm so grateful for them because at the beginning of this pandemic, I feel like at the beginning of like quarantine and everything, we were cooking up new recipes every day. We had time. It was like a way to de-stress. We were just like, let's come up with new recipes and cook all the time. It's been over a year. That ship has sailed. We don't have time. We don't care. We don't want to prep and plan big extravagant dinners every night. It's not something we want to do. So, uh, we, that's why I'm so grateful for HelloFresh because they have fixed that problem for us. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and grocery store trips. So you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in about 30 minutes or less. HelloFresh offers 25 plus recipes to choose from each week, from vegetarian meals to craft burgers and extra special gourmet options. There's something for everyone to enjoy with all recipes designed and tested by professional chefs and nutritional experts to ensure deliciousness and simplicity. We love it. Not only is it fast and easy, but it's also a great date night. So, you know, we have a two year old who's, um, so fun, but also a lot. And it's, we usually get to like six o'clock, six thirty at night. And we're like, Oh my God, we need to make dinner. What are we going to do? We haven't prepped anything. We don't want to order groceries or course, go to the grocery store. So like yeah. they have it all. It's all ready for you. Everything all the stuff is for the meal. We still get ready to, cook. to go. You know what I mean? And it's, it's like just a date all night out. too. Cause it's like, usually how we cook is it's like one of us takes dinner. It's like, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm cooking tonight and I'm doing this or I'm cooking. Yeah, it is fun to do it together. So it's a, something we can do together. It's a fun date night and, um, it's all really easy and it's all really fast. And I think one of the biggest things for with cooking for me is measuring everything out and chopping everything up and making sure everything is the right amount to put in your dish. And this is, you just get exactly what you need. It makes it very, very easy. So HelloFresh is pretty wonderful. So if you guys want to check it out, we recommend you go to hellofresh.com slash 12 relax and use code 12 relax for 12 free 
meals. What? I was yeah. like, what's the 12 about? It's oh, 12 it's free meals? It's about 12 free meals, wow. lovey. And that includes free shipping, guys. So go check it out, hellofresh.com slash 12 relax and use code 12 relax for 12 free meals guys the free shipping are you kidding me what are you waiting for try out america's number one meal kit today you will love it check it out so um i'm sure we can get into even more of your perspective on the pregnancy so please as you i was i think i started sweating (laughs) like during that last question in the meantime okay in the meantime while you think of more stuff if you want to shout it out if you think oh i want to talk about this thing i think you'd have to like it's it's honestly it's like it's so triggering it's like for a, you. Yeah, it's, this episode, yeah, I, did, I didn't expect this. It's very triggering. So um, I do want to, because of that, because pregnancy was so miserable and a lot of people um, kind of shame me for talking about how awful pregnancy was, which I hate that, by the way. I think more women did should some be some people, people like it, though, that you were honest yes, about it? Yes, women, that- of course. There are so many women who are like, oh my gosh, I never hear anyone talk negatively about pregnancy it's only you're not like allowed to because you're supposed to just be grateful or yeah so you're supposed to be um great it's a miracle it's a blessing and it sure and it really is it's it is incredible and so mind-blowing that you can grow a human being inside your body like it's wild yeah, it but is still so you're nuts. growing a human being in your body right so but here's the and thing then it comes rips out of, of you of course they're you're not allowed to complain about that well the reason is what people say is you should be grateful because there are people who can't and they all they want is that and i totally understand and sympathize with that to me though it feels similar to like if i were to break my leg and it hurts and my leg is broken and it totally sucks if I were to say, oh my gosh, my leg hurts so bad. And someone were to say to me, well, what about people who can't walk ever? You should not never complain about your broken leg because one day your broken leg will be fixed and you'll be fine. But there's some people who can never walk. That's kind of how it felt to me. Or like, if you have a cold and you're like, ah, I'm, I have this cold. It's so annoying. I hate this cold. And someone's like, well, there's some people who are, you don't have noses who, yeah. Or who are sick for their entire life. Like there's some people yeah. with horrible illnesses. How dare you complain about a cold? So that's kind of how it felt to me is like, I'm not allowed to complain about fainting every day, having cholestasis, which was terrifying. And I, every day for the last month thought I was going to, you know, I don't even want to say the words, but one of the outcomes of cholestasis is horrendous. It's the worst case scenario that you can imagine. And I can't even say it. It's so bad. And I mean, I, I was, I couldn't walk. I was, I was in the worst pain I've ever been in my life. I couldn't breathe. My nose stopped working. My lungs were squished. I I was in so much pain. My teeth were chipping out. I, it was horrendous. You're, You're complaining a lot. I know. So, um, people got really mad at me for complaining about all of these things. And so I thought instead of sitting here and and complaining, which is what I just did, even though I said that's not the point <laughs> of this. Uh, I'm just giving you a rundown of how it was miserable. And I, and I, and something I wished that I had had prior to getting pregnant was more um, stories. And I, I wish I had heard this more that pregnancy could be this. I thought pregnancy, you get bigger. And you get to wear cute little maternity outfits and you're growing a baby and you're tired and maybe you get a little cute morning sickness. Mm -hmm. They give it a cute little name, morning sickness. No, it's nausea and it lasts all day and it's awful and it is not sickness. It is the most horrendous nausea. Um, and, And I thought maybe at the end you're uncomfy. Like, oh, your feet swell up. You know, like I thought it wasn't going to be bad at all. I thought it would be fine. Um, And I I wish more women were like, hey, this is actually really hard and painful and um, it's, it's not all the cute things you hear for some women, maybe it is, but mm-hmm. not for most. So, um, anyway, that's why I talked about it a lot, but right now I thought it might be fun to tell some fun slash cute or funny stories from pregnancy. And let me tell you, I had to think really hard, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, since I only ever complain, I was trying to think of fun stories. So I have some written down and if you think of any, as I tell them, um, please, you know what was jump- hilarious? I'm already excited. Uh, I thought this was really funny was when we were on an airplane Oh God! and <laughs> it's, uh, I'm sitting there next to you and mm-hmm. the plane is about to take off. We're next on the run. We're like, not even next on the runway. We're like, we're taking off. We're about to <laughs> like the engines are revving up and you just start going, Whoa, Whoa, <laughs> with your eyes closed and became totally blackout incommunicado. Like you wouldn't respond to I anything I, I said this, yeah. and then unbuckled your seatbelt. Yeah. 
as the flight attendant is looking at me saying like, has your <laughs> wife lost her mind? Why tell her to sit down? I know. And I go, she's not listening to me. And then she can't, she can't even get up because of her she's rules. Buckled in, at yeah. this point, the plane is taking off and you just got up from your seat, yeah. this very pregnant woman and laid down on the floor yep. and laid down on the floor in the aisles to which case then she had to emergency pick up the phone and tell the pilots to hold off on the throttle yeah. and not take off the plane. Like it was literally going to take mm-hmm. off and then they like must have hit something. And they made me get up. And as I got up, I started barfing everywhere. No, but you wouldn't get up. Well, when, but when they did make me get up, you, I started barfing. You wouldn't get up. So like the plane had to then not, I mean, I guess not emergency land, but like emergency stop taking off. And then an honest to God, Doctor. Is there a doctor on board? <laughs> I know. Which, to me, I, it was like oh, such an out of body so experience and so helpless. It was so and embarrassing. Th- there were three. There were three doctors on board that ran up, um, and uh, then you just started barfing, vom- b- vomiting everywhere. <laughs> they so had to turn bad. around the plane. The people on the plane. Not stoked about that. You know what, though? Then I, firemen came on the plane. This is so funny. Yeah. Sorry, I'm telling you a really funny story. <laughs> this is not funny. So the, what's, what is funny is that part of the story you're telling is one of the funny stories I wrote down, but it just reminded me Which of... Which part? So I was super, super embarrassed when this happened. It was mortifying, but I will never forget the kindness of the one behind me because like Eric said, everyone on the plane was really pissed, obviously, because we delayed the takeoff and I had to get off the plane and it took forever and the fireman had to go on and I couldn't get up because I was fainting. And this is something that happened all the time with me. Um, it was it's awful. chiropractor's office? Yeah, I, I did this. At the, I fainted at the chiropractor's office. I barfed at the chiropractor's office. I mean, this happened everywhere. Like Backstage I was just at always, your shows? Mm-hmm. Almost on stage at your shows? Mm-hmm. It was bad. And so um, it happened on the plane, which is the worst place to happen. And I, I knew I would be fine. So I don't remember the like moaning and the taking off my seatbelt and laying there. And I don't remember hearing them say, is there a doctor on board? I don't remember any of this. I remember feeling sick and knowing I was about to faint. And at this point it happened so often that I knew what to do. So when I started to black out and I don't remember this part, my, but my brain knew like when you start to faint, you lay down and you you elevate your feet and that helps the fainting to not be like, so you don't fall and get hurt. And also it helps it, um, to not last as long and you don't actually fully black out. You just lose vision and hearing and whatever. And then I'm fine. But there was a period of time as this process started to happen from my perspective mm-hmm. to where you would just close your eyes mm-hmm. and like you couldn't hear anything. Like, yeah. I would say whatever, no matter what I said to you, like it was don't touch you. <laughs> I absolutely could not touch you even in, in the most comforting I manner. Know. And you would just go, Whoa, Whoa. <laughs> like, and, so and, gross. like and, and did, I could tell oh, you, so Hey, uh, you can't do this right now. The plane's taking off or the house you. is on fire. And it wouldn't matter. Like you're just, all I know so is that, I know. All I know is that when, um, I was coming to, I was vomiting and I, they were sitting me back up in my seat and I knew I would be fine. Cause I knew this happens all the time. And I know once I faint and once I like, and then once I barf, I'm fine. And like, it'll probably happen again later, but like, I'm not going to die. Like I know what's going to happen. Like I faint, I barf and then I feel sick and then I'm fine. And that's was just my pregnancy. And so to me, it wasn't like, Oh, we need to stop the plane and get her to the hospital. I was like, Oh, I'm fine now. I just barf. Like, let's go, let's go home. Like we just had a busy weekend on, on tour of shows. And Where I was you like, had fainted backstage right before your show, by the way. Right. And so I was like, we're fine. And so when they said, no, we have to stop and you have to get off. Like they had to take they the plane let you, back. We essentially we're on the no fly list. Yeah. So when that happened, I was so upset because I knew the whole plane. Now I've delayed hundreds of people's trips and I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Yeah, I remember being embarrassed. And I started crying because I was like, no, 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 please. No, no, no. I'm fine. I promise you I'm fine. This happens all the time. I promise you I'm fine. And I was like begging, begging them to let me stay on the plane and just to take off. I was like, please. And they're like, we cannot illegally. We have to escort you off the plane. You have to go get checked out by a paramedic. Um, Seattle, right? I think we're in Seattle. Yeah. yeah. And I was so sad and I was so embarrassed. And I remember saying I was so embarrassed and people on the plane, I'm going to cry. Cause this is how bad, this is how much this woman impacted me. There's a woman sitting behind us, an older woman. And <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> she goes, I said, I'm so embarrassed. And I turned around and I, and I said, I'm so sorry to anyone who could hear 
Like, I was yeah, like, you, I'm so you sorry. You stood up and apologized to I, the plane. Yeah, once we left, I apologized to the whole plane. But, yeah, like, in that moment, I turned around that. to the people just who were nearest to me. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. And this woman behind me, she goes, don't you be embarrassed. You need to take care of that baby. <laughs> <laughs> and she was, and, she, and then she said something about how she's a grandma or something. She's like, if it were my granddaughter or grandson, I'd want you to take care of that baby. And I cried and it's making me cry. It was so sweet. And I will, will never forget her kindness in yeah. that moment. I was so embarrassed and she was so kind to me when everyone else on the plane was clearly furious. Um, but yeah, then we got off the plane and as we were getting off the plane, I turned and I was like, I'm so sorry to, yeah, everyone. to everyone. I was so embarrassed. But anyway, um, we are here to tell funny stories right now. So the funny story I had about that time? about that yeah, okay, yeah. was after that. So we get off the plane and they're like, we're going to take such good care of you. This is a pregnant woman who just fainted and vomited everywhere. They, they had me checked out by, um, the very paramedics. nice, like uh, crew of firemen. Yeah. Firemen who, like, took your vitals. They're like, you're fine. And they're yeah. all like, we all have wives who have kids. You're fine. Like, we know this happens. You're fine. And so then they're like, we're going to get you back home right now on the next flight. We're going to take such good care of you. This man walks us over to customer service. He's like, we're going to get her on the next plane. First class. She's going home in an hour. And then he disappeared. And then this customer service is like, there's no flights for nine hours. Like, mm-hmm. and I was like, no, 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 they just said they're going to take care of us. And they're like, sorry, you're not going home anytime soon. So then I was very upset because now you have a pregnant woman. Who has just fainted on an aircraft. F- faints all the time. Now stuck in an airport for nine hours. And so we went to. I didn't think we'd ever get home. I know it was horrible. I thought so we lived in Seattle We wanted to go like sit in like the lounge area, the like first class lounge area that they have at airports sometimes. And I will never forget. It was not funny in the moment. But now looking back, it makes me laugh. We're sitting outside about to go in. So the, the lobby of this lounge, the people working there can see us. The people at the desk can see us. We're right outside and we're talking about going inside and you're just sweetly trying to get me to calm down because I am so upset. I'm so embarrassed. I'm upset. I'm very pregnant. I feel like garbage. I just want to be home. It was just me and I just, yeah. And I just found out because Corey stayed on the plane, like Corey and whoever else was with us. They all, everyone was on the plane and they went home yeah. and we stayed behind because um, I didn't want to make everyone get off the plane who was in our party. So anyway, uh, we're sitting outside this lounge and I'm a disaster and you're just sweetly trying to calm me down. And I remember you saying, Colleen, people are looking at us. They think I'm like this abusive husband <laughs> who's like making you cry. You're the, the, my pregnant wife making you cry. Yeah, just this like, pregnant please, woman like just take a in breath. Front of her, uh, <laughs> and, yeah. I, and now looking back, it I'm like, sus. it totally did look sus. Like I'm sitting on this bench sobbing and you're standing over me, like just trying to calm me down. It, it, it was now looking back, like all these situations are so funny, but back then they were not funny. Um, I do have an actually funny one. The only reason- We then sat in that lounge just to- like end this story. We then sat on that lounge for eight to nine hours. Yeah. And then on the next flight, right before takeoff, you started to feel fainty again. And I was like, I know a pr- like pray, like, please I know. I just was like, make it through. I, take I think off. I was like, if I faint, don't say anything. Right. Like, just, just let just me let her faint. Be. Let me faint in this chair. Don't let me out of the chair, but oh, let me faint so in the chair. Terrifying. Um, so yeah. So the fun things of pregnancy that are funny. So that uh, was a long story. That was not really fun, but The only thing, the only thing I could say that I was really grateful for, other than the fact that I got to be pregnant was feeling him move. Flynn never stopped moving in me. Like he was from the second I felt him move for the first time until he came out, like I felt him moving all the time. And I was grateful for that because in, there are a lot of moments when you're pregnant where you're panicked that something is wrong. And I just had a strange moment where it was like, it's like weird to think that that was him. Yeah, isn't that weird? Because now we know him. Yeah, he's it's hilarious really weird. Little guy. Yeah. That was so, him in there. I know. Wild. And he, I mean, he always, and he was like right up against my skin. So like you could see like his elbow go across, his foot go across my stomach, his hand, like you could see it was wild and weird. it was 24 seven. I mean, he was always, I remember during birth, like as I was pushing, I could feel him moving around and like, it was crazy. It was, so that was like, probably if anyone had, if I had to say the one thing about pregnancy that I was like, enjoyed, I'd say, even though it sometimes hurt, cause he would like, he poked a rib out of place and like that kind of stuff was like painful, but like he, it was really cool that I got to feel him move all the time. The other, uh, I think funny story from pregnancy, which you can see if you, um, have seen our 
the video of the birth, but like that day to me is very funny. Like when my water broke, it was just so shocking and so early that it was like, yeah. I mean, I woke you up and I said, my like, water just broke. It's like 5 a.m., right? 5.30, 6, something like that. You, but I, yeah. I woke you up and you, and I said, my water broke and you just stared, I, stared I at me. I sat up and just stared at you, right? Yeah, you did not respond to me. For a long beat, like a t- very 10, 10 long. to 15 seconds, yeah. just stared at you. And I said... I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. You, no, There's you something. said you're not dreaming. Oh, I did. And that's when I realized, oh, I'm not dreaming. <laughs> yeah. And it was we week, gotta, weeks early. It was three weeks three and, and a day early. Or something. Yeah. So, um, and that's because I had cholestasis. So my body was like, get him out of here. Uh, which is when your liver leaks like Name bile drop. into your bloodstream. Name dropping cholestasis. But you know what? I will say this. I, so I, I was pregnant, um, earlier this year and, um, we lost the baby, which was the worst experience ever. But I will say that the, probably the number one thing that freaked me out about the idea of being pregnant again, when I was pregnant, I I think the thing that scared me the most was the idea of like, Oh, what if I have to do the whole pregnancy? Like, because I got to, he came out like three and a half weeks early. And so I was like, Oh, the last three weeks, that's the time most women talk about. That's the time most women are like, Oh, that last month is the worst experience of your life. And I skipped that. Like, what if I had to do that part? That'd be crazy. So I, that's like a big fear of mine. I mean, I would do it. It's like summer school. It's like, no, it's, that's pretty spooky. The spooky dukes. Could you imagine? Spooky dukes. Three more like weeks of that? No way. Pregnant women are no, just so I don't think, amazing. I can't imagine you. I feel like you would have been induced. You know what I mean? You would have just I don't stopped know. a it random was, person on the street and been like, induce me. Like, because you were at the breaking yeah. point there. It was pretty rough. Um, so I, I had this big idea of like telling all these funny and interesting stories. I feel like I just told bad stories more. Like, do I not I've, have funny or interesting stories? No, I'm, uh, it's fascinating for me to go back through all this. I think like a trauma. I mean, a positive about it for sure. Other than obviously Flynn and the fact that I got to do it is how uh, much stronger it made me because I feel like I'm kind of a a baby with pain and things like that. I feel like in the past I've I've been a big old baby. We've been watching Naked and Afraid. Oh my gosh. To like relax at the end of the night. It's just us watching butts in the woods. (laughs) Uh, And like you're like, I can't imagine you like, you're like, an hour, an hour and, and you'd be like an extracted. Hour? You think I would last an 20 hour? minutes and you'd be 20 extracted. Minutes? Yeah. I'd quit in the car. Right. Like there's, yeah. I wouldn't, I would never make it on that show. Are you yeah. kidding? Not a freaking chance. I was asked to do amazing race and I turned it down. Cause I was like, you have to run on that show. <laughs> I'm, I'm not kidding. This really happened. Have you seen what you look like running? Yeah. It's love. It's not good. It's not good. <laughs> It's really not good. Um, so anyway, uh, I, but I will say though, that like, I, I, I feel like I could do, I could do it. I could do literally anything. That's how I feel now after having gone through that. Yeah. I don't, I wouldn't go do naked and afraid or any shows like this because I don't want to, but I know that I could do it. And I know that if I said I was going to do it, I would win. Like, that's how I feel. I I honestly like fullheartedly believe that as well after seeing what you went through. Yeah. Like I know I wouldn't, I don't want to, so I'm not going to, and I don't really do things I don't want to do. But like, if I decided like, no, I'm going to do it. I would do it. Like, I, I think I would crush it. And that's how I feel now with things I feel like in the past, I'd be like, I could never get through that. I could never do that thing. Yeah. Your tol your tolerance for, for just hard things. For all, I don't know. All of the pain and mental anguish like you have a very high tolerance now i, I feel I you assume. yeah you too i feel like you and i could we can get through literally anything yeah. and it would just make us like stronger and you don't complain about anything anymore so oh please you telling me i don't complain about things is my favorite complaining thing complaining is happened. just like part of my it's just personality it you know? really is <laughs> <laughs> but i love that about you love but you know what you don't complain about as much anymore lovey what's that you know, after you've had a long night of like, you know, celebrating something, having fun, drinking some alcoholic beverage of sorts, you don't feel as uh, yucky the next day usually because of our next sponsor that we're about to talk about. D. 
HM Detox, guys. Imagine this. A few drinks in the evening, you're having a great time, and the next morning, you wake up feeling normal. It is possible with no days wasted. I'm not a big drinker, and one of the biggest reasons why is because I feel so gross the next morning. I, I cannot drink. I, like, immediately feel sick, and then the next day, I feel like, like, You're like, I'm I feel allergic, gross. maybe. Yeah, like, I feel gross the whole next day. Like, it ruins me the whole next day. But this is the first time ever where I feel like I'm able to survive the next day after I've had a drink. I still am not a big drinker. Eric loves the occasional glass of wine or the occasional whiskey. I feel like I've seen you drinking more often these days. Not often, but just I've seen that in your hand yeah, a few times. Yeah, just occasionally. It's, uh, yeah. But Eric, why <laughs> you give me that look? Or like also right now. <laughs> oh, like... yeah, I guess you are drinking right now. Um, but he, uh, he's been doing this more than me because I'm not a big drinker. And we've noticed, both of us have noticed, like it makes a huge difference in how you feel the next day. It's really awesome. So uh, No Days Wasted is here to help you maximize life's moments. DHM Detox is an amazing herbal supplement, which is essentially a vitamin for when you drink. Like I said, I don't drink very often, um, but this has helped you. Yes. Yeah. And I've been taking them even when I haven't drank. <laughs> what? I feel like just, it's, it's hydrating. Yeah, and it's, hydrating. Uh, makes you feel just. It's got all those vitamins in it and it's, it's tasty. Makes you feel refreshed. Yeah. It's up in the game. You, uh, he loves it. What can I say? So we all need a little support when we have a couple of drinks so we can get back to feeling our best the next day. Life is all about balance and that's what DHM detox helps with. DHM detox uses research science to help boost your body's natural response to alcohol and help break down those toxins. It's built on the backbone of DHM, a wonderful herbal plant-based ingredient that has been used in Asia for centuries. Forget the brain fog, anxiety, and that gross next day feeling. Just take two capsules after your first couple drinks and it goes to work. If you're having a bigger night, just double up and take two packets. How much is your next day worth? For just a couple dollars, you can bounce back and support your liver all at once. It's a completely risk-free purchase, so if you don't love it, they'll refund you on your first box. This is an easy decision, y'all. I've got you 20% off your order and free shipping in the U.S., just head over to nodayswasted.co slash relax and use promo code relax at checkout. That's nodayswasted.co slash relax for 20% off your order. N-O-D-A-Y-S-W-A-S-T-E-D dot C-O slash relax. Go check it out everyone um I like that name no days wasted That's i know good, it's really good good name um so you know i do have something really fun right now i know i said i was like oh my gosh guys we're gonna talk about really funny stuff about pregnancy and then i just ended up crying about a woman on an airplane um that was hilarious i like the, the, the funniest story. part of this episode is when you cry no but this will be funny for me so there is something that people do online and i think it's so dumb and i'm about to do it to you <laughs> so people do this thing where they're like, my husband says that it's not even painful to have a contraction. So I'm going to make him feel a contraction. And I've You're seen this- to give the hold ice cube thing. That's another thing. I that know. Made, that I know. Woman I also that made us like hold ice cubes in her hand. I remember that being a part of the reason I hated that class too, is she was like, this is what a contraction feels like. Hold this ice cube in your hand for as long as you can. And when you feel like you can't hold it anymore, keep holding on. And that's what a contraction is. And I was like, that's what piercing absolute like, what? agony in your pelvis frostbite? feels like frostbite and contractions are not the same. And it, it, I think she was just trying to get the point across that like the mindset is like, when you feel like you literally cannot do it anymore, you have to keep doing it. Yeah. It's kind of what she was saying, but it was to me, I was like, that's dumb. Like, I don't want to hold this ice cube Where are the ice cubes. No ice cubes. Love. Ugh. So this is actually a little machine that I use all the time. I used to use it all the time. What's happening? And you put it, it's like, it's called a tense machine. There's you've, machines You've involved? seen me use this. So it's a thing. I used to use it on my shoulder all the time. I have tendonitis. It used to be very bad in my shoulder and arm. So I'd use this thing and it like, it helps your muscles to like, uh, right, yeah, feel better. It's, it, it like puts tightens like a, them and then releases with them. With like an tightens electric them. charge, yeah. right? So okay. people use this on their husbands or their partners. I saw this on our kitchen counter and I was like, why did she get yeah. this? I thought it was like... Uh, oh, it's for you, baby. It's for you. I so your shoulder was bothering you again. Well, it is. And I'm actually... Where are you going to put that? So, but here's the deal, love, is that I've seen people do this and I'm like, I use that all the time on my shoulder on the highest setting, like the highest you can get electrocuted from this thing is what I put it on. And I don't, it doesn't hurt me at all. I'm like, it makes my arm like, I never jolt. tried it, 
but we're going to do it on Eric. Where? And I just have to say, we're doing it where you have contractions on your tummy. You know, tum tum. We do on your tum tum, love. No. Yeah, you gotta have a little uterus for tonight, and we're gonna see how high he can handle it. But I will say the reason I think this is stupid. We're doing it because it'll be funny, but it is stupid because as a woman who has experienced contractions and labor, not the same this thing. This feels literally nothing like a contraction. Literally, Let's not do it then. Not even slightly close to it. Like, like I said, it doesn't even hurt. It just like contracts your muscles a little. Like it makes your muscles flinch. But like, I don't know why. Uh, anyway, it's, it's supposedly funny. So if you're watching, you're going to see it happen. If you're listening, you're probably just going to hear Eric scream unless it doesn't hurt you. Just me in silence. Might, it might just you might just just by, be silent. For you. Maybe so it we're gonna, feels We're going to hook this good. thing up. He's got them on his tummy right where the uterus would be if he had a uterus, which he does not. And I'm just going to. Turn this bad boy on. <laughs> it's so stupid. And I don't, I've never used this one before, so. I can't believe that you're doing this. It says program one. I have to figure out what the heck this thing does. I don't know. Oh, what well, that's good to menu? hear as the person with it, it's menu. attached to. Tens. Wait. Love, I've, please tell me you know what you're doing a I, little bit. Oh, whoa. It's, it's got all these things. Program 13, 12. How do I? Feel? I don't think this is safe. I don't feel that this is safe. Wait, now I feel it. You feel it a little bit? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Okay, now I feel it a lot. Stop. <laughs> oh, no, really? Yeah. Okay, so I think it goes up to like, um, it's like it's what does just, it feel like? We're on a really low setting. Like, There's. It tickles. This feels very weird. I don't like okay. it. There are, um, it looks like there's 10 notches and we're on the third notch. What okay? notch is giving birth? 10. So this is like. Where your, does it say that? This is In like the, you're starting to feel the contractions. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, okay, take Does it hurt? What'd you put it up to? <laughs> it's only on the third notch still. Did you throw it up to ten? No. Gloves. <laughs> I really only put it up a little. Is it really hurt? Ah, yeah, it hurts. <laughs> stop. Wait, we're not whoa, done. Whoa, uh, no, stop. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, it's weird. It's weird. It's Does weird. it hurt for real, Yes, yeah, turn it up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just rip it out. We're in the I middle of it labor. Really, it was really hurt. It was like... Love That's me. not a normal. We're in the middle of labor. You can't just quit. Does it hurt for realsies? Why do I? Why do I need to? <laughs> <laughs> it. No bad words. What's that now? It's literally on two. <laughs> <laughs> what did you turn it up to? <laughs> Stop! What did, did you turn it up to? Four. Oh. Lovey, relax. Oh my gosh. Can I take it off now? Yeah, you can take it off. You... I know, it's stuck in the hair. <laughs> it's on his tummy and it's stuck on the hair. It was very ah. scary. <laughs> this is a podcast. <laughs> okay, uh, apparently. <laughs> love. <laughs> ah. <laughs> okay, well, that was fun for me. Um, Why was that fun for you? Lovey. That was it wasn't hilarious. fun for me to see you in pain. It wasn't fun Did to I see... Did I laugh maniacally when you were going through contractions? I thought you Did were I... acting. Maybe it would have been better <laughs> if I was laying down, if I had a peanut between my legs, if you were petting my head and feeding me ice chips, maybe I would have been okay. Also, if I had copious amounts of drugs. <laughs> okay, it didn't have copious amounts. I had an epidural. Three. Yeah, I'll Give me an epidural, then do that. Let's see what oh, happens. I was very grateful for my epidural. I love you. That was so weird. Was it? What did it feel like on your tummy? Do it. I've done it. I've done it on my shoulder. I've never done it on my stomach. It was very, well, I mean, it's strange. I don't yeah. know. Like, really not good. I don't feel good now. I'm sorry. Are you able to continue with the podcast? Ugh. I'll talk for now so you can Can I recover. complain through the rest of it? If I can complain about do. it through Go the rest it. of it. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is one of my least favorite things slash Maybe one of my favorite things about pregnancy, which is pregnancy apps. The apps oh, yeah. for pregnancy are one of my biggest pet peeves in the universe. And I'm going to talk about my favorite app in the world. Like not just my favorite pregnancy app, my favorite app in the world. It's the best app of all time. Okay. But first I want to say why I don't like pregnancy apps. I, I appreciated like knowing what a size Flynn was what he was developing like as he was growing in me like I thought that was nice that every day you have like something tells you what's going on inside your body but I hate the comparisons your baby's the size of a kumquat your baby's the size of a pumpkin because all the things that your baby is the size of are things that are, have multiple sizes 
Yeah. It drives me crazy. It wasn't very specific or it'd be some random thing. like a- Well, the one time I loved it was there was one day where it was like, your baby's the size of a Lego man. And I yeah. was like, that's a very Perfect. specific Spot size. on terms I can understand. I understand what that means. But when it, every other one was a fruit or a vegetable and I was like, I, and also what? like rare, like uh, fruits and vegetables that you cannot get at your local grocery store. One time it was like, your baby's the size of a bunch of celery. Do you remember that? And I was like, a bunch of celery? Yeah. Anyway. The writer's room there at those yeah, crazy have, apps. So there is, um, there's a lot of crazy apps. If we have time today, I did download some insane pregnancy apps that have one star ratings and the reviews were very funny to read. But my favorite pregnancy app is... The worst app in the world, and it is my favorite app, and it is called Hi Daddy. And I've talked about this before a couple of times online, but I've never like really gone deep promo, into it. Huh? It's horrible. And I, I never say this about products. Like I always try to be very careful, but this one is horrible. So there's all these pregnancy apps for women. And there's, I mean, to me, they're not for women. They're for anyone. Anyone can enjoy them. But someone felt the need to make one for men. Like, well, men need an app. I don't want that frilly one that's called, you know, expecting a baby. I don't want that on my phone. I want one that's for men. uh, I didn't download this, by the way. No, he did not. I did, though. I've had it on my phone. That's what I'm saying. Like, I didn't download it, but you did to make fun of it. My sister in law warned me not to feel this way. My sister in law told me about this app because I, I think there's an equivalent, a female equivalent. I think there's a high mommy one or something. And she somehow stumbled upon Hi Daddy. And she was like, Colleen, you have to see this app. It's so funny. It every day it gives the dad an update. So for when for when you have one for, you know, if you download any pregnancy app that tracks your baby, it'll tell you what your baby's developing, symptoms you might be having, things that might help your um, different symptoms, uh, the size of your baby, when your next checkup should be, what you can like it tells you all these details. So this app is another daily reminder app before the dad, but it's trying to make it like cool or something for the dad. It is the, it is so horrible. So it's from the perspective of the baby talking to the dad from the mother's womb. Okay. And it is the most sexist, misogynistic, just dumbest gives completely wrong, inaccurate information every day to a dad. And it is, I, I, I screenshotted some of my favorites for you. Okay. Mm-hmm. So here we go. So here's, here's some of my favorites that have happened recently. Yes. I still have it on my phone and it's currently tracking. I am currently tracking my sister-in-law's pregnancy on the app. So every day I open it up and it tells me the day that she is on in her pregnancy. Every day you open it up. Not every day. I, I think about it like maybe once a week and I screenshot my favorites. Are you and paying Jessica. these people? Yes, I pay for it. It's crazy. Mm. It's worth it though because it makes me laugh. How much? I don't remember. Probably a few bucks. Okay, so here's some of my favorites I just saw tonight, okay? Here's one. It's from the, this is from the fetus, the dad. I have a question for you, pops. Oh, the fetus is talking to <laughs> the me. The fetus is talking to me. Oh. I have a question for you, pops. Has mom developed pregnancy brain yet? What? You never heard of that thing? It's kind of like that old folks disease, CRS, you know, can't remember stuff, but for knocked up women, chill out and go with the flow. It'll pass when I do. This is the educational pregnancy app for men. such a bro. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Get ready for this. This is, this was one of my favorites that happened. These are all from this week. Okay. Hey dad, I got a way for you to score some brownie points with mom. You definitely need them after that Shamu comment the other night. Book her a massage session. It'll help her relax, ease some of the aches and pains she's been suffering with. Uh, and, and with luck, get her to talk to you again. Be careful though. You get an idiot that doesn't know prenatal massage and they could trigger her labor, which would be pretty bad as I ain't finished bacon yet. So he's assuming that all dads just call their wives fat when they're pregnant. Shamu, like the famous yeah. SeaWorld killer whale. Crazy. Um, Orca. Uh, love. Mm-hmm. This is insane. It's insane. Wait, oh, they get so worse. A human owns and runs his company and has hired, I assume, another human to write these. Yeah, every and, day. And approves them. And they're all like, there's barely ever any like educational stuff. It's mostly just sexist, horrible stuff. Listen do you to this think one. They, well, do you think they know that this is like this kind of like, um, kitsch kind of funny thing to women? And it's so not funny. So like they're trying to enrage you on purpose because like 
The only, cause no. here's the thing here. Here's what I'm going to say to you is that no father to be is paying for and downloading this app. It is only being paid for and downloaded by women no. who hate this app. No. And that's their entire business no. model. I'm telling and you. And it's mine and I created it. No. And well, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> stupid. This one is really great. Dude, you know I'm all about sparing mom's feelings and stuff, but tell her to quit blaming all that jiggling jelly on me. Three or four extra pounds a month are mine, but the rest of that is her chewing too much and moving too little. She needs to keep herself in shape for both our sakes. <gasps> oh, I forgot that it was are the fetus kidding? talking to the dad. Yes. I don't think this is real. I, don't, I think this is it's all a real. joke. It's real. Love, I'm no, gonna, this, yes, love, it is this real. This is marketed, this is literally no. marketed to you to be enraged. No, That's I'm their entire you. business model. Lovey, it's real. And I'm going to read you the reviews right now. I promise you it's real. Their entire business model, no father-to-be is downloading this, paying for it. It is only. No, you're wrong. Only mothers-to-be. No. And. Yes, you're their entire demographic. It's just upsetting you. Listen to this. No, this, this, here are some reviews. Happy review, five stars. This app has been extremely helpful for me. Puts me at ease when I worry a lot, especially with this being my first child. I want to be at, at my best as a father and the daily reminders make me feel like my child is already talking to me. Thankful for this. This is, these are real. Are you kidding? No way. Um... To be honest, this is amazing. Five star review. To be honest, I was already excited about being a dad, but this kept me in the loop of what was going on and actually made it funny and entertaining at the same time. You can even switch from good child and naughty child to get different info. Great app for us dads. Like this is insane. Like there's so many good reviews. Very funny and helpful. It's a great app for dads to be my second time using it in three years. And it's funny and gives good info. It literally doesn't. The only info it gives is like your wife is fat and maybe just don't take it so seriously. Like. <gasps> Lovey. There, and there's multiple ones where it's like, there's one I didn't read because we were like talking about something else that listen to this. This one starts with, okay. Uh, yo daddy. Yo, it just hit me that you may have been in here before me, but you have absolutely no idea how I've changed the place. It's cool. Now I've turned the entire place into a big tank. Like the astronauts train it. No kidding. I float around weightless. Like I'm in space. You jealous too bad. You've been in here before me. The baby's talking to the dad about having intercourse with his mom. Like it's, it's I think, weirdest I thing. I mean, if I was the, uh, this person's creative writing teacher, I'd be like, yeah, I like that. I like that, uh, uh analogy and, um, love. I get it. I think I like that one. Lovey. No, you don't. And I like the idea of my child talking to me like, yo, dad, you've been in here before. This one's I'm redecorating. The this place. one's, um, says, Awesome spelled Jeez. wrong. And then it says best app. You fell like you, you baby speak with you. Love people love this app. They love it. I'm just trying to imagine like Flynn talking like that. <laughs> Cause it would just be like, so mm, and track, by the way, it's three ninety nine. <laughs> I paid three ninety nine for that, but the, it's this, I just think it's so sexist and awful and I hate it. And, um, it's one of my favorites, uh, because it makes me laugh at how insane it is and that like people actually use it and like, like it. It's so awful. I hate it. Stop paying them. I can't stop. I need it in my life. I know. Cause that's their business model and it's working. Okay. Well, you know what else I need in my life? You're funding that. You're I know, funding. Love. But I don't just spend my money on stupid things like that app. I also spend my money on great things like third love bras. All right. Speaking I've been of in your bras, bro. <laughs> hey, I'm going to talk about being in your bras. Speaking of pregnancy, <laughs> one uh, fun thing about pregnancy is your body changes quite a lot. And that includes the booby area. And hey it uh, like a lot, like the amount my chest area changed when I was pregnant and after I was pregnant, um, up until now is wild. And the amount of times I've had to switch around bras has been frustrating and, um, just a, a mess. And so I'm very grateful for third love because they have been able to find the perfect bra for me. 
They're designed for your perfect fit. Third Love uses the measurements of millions of women to design bras with all day comfort and support. They have more than 80 sizes. Every Third Love bra is made with signature memory foam cups, no slip straps, and a scratch free band. I love how easy it is to take the fitting room quiz. Like a personal shopper for your boobs. The fitting room quiz focuses on size, breast shape, current fit issues, and your personal style to deliver bras and underwear that are a perfect fit just for you. Throughout the whole thing, fit stylists are available for one-on-one chats to answer any questions. I love this. It's way better than the traditional bra fitting experience, which is usually very awkward because this one you can do from the comfort and convenience of your own home. The fitting room has helped over 18 million women find their true bra size and you could be next. My favorite part about third love is the comfort and the quality. It's time to break up with your bra that is horrible and fall in love with better bras and underwear. Your boobs deserve it. All right. Third love is changing the game when it comes to comfort and style for all of your everyday essentials from loungewear and wireless styles to their number one rated 24 seven classic t-shirt bra. They're creating the ultimate shopping experience. And if that's not enough to make you want to try it out, third love is all about giving back. I love this about third love. They donate all of their gently used return bras to women in need, supporting charities in their local San Francisco Bay Area and across the United States. So far, Third Love has donated over $40 million in bras. I think that is so incredible. Third Love knows your one true fit is out there. So right now they are offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash relax now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash relax check it out no song check it out it's a bra for your boobs i do have more apps i'm like cur- i'm curious if we should try these apps or not one of them is called fingerprint pregnancy apparently it just can tell from your fingerprint if you're pregnant or not so i think we should try it okay it's a pregnancy test scanner okay so i'm gonna what listen Love. It tells you. So you put your fingerprint on here. Put your finger. Oh, it's scanning my finger, guys. And it's going to tell me if I'm pregnant. What if this is how we announced I was pregnant? (laughs) What if I was pregnant and this is how we announced it? Okay. Oh, private internet access. Wait, what? It's an ad. It's an ad. What do I do? An ad has popped up. Okay. (gasps) I'm pregnant, it says. And it even has a little, um, a little thing on it. Here, let's see if you're pregnant, love. Okay. Put your finger on it. Uh, any finger? By the way, I'm not pregnant. Um, any specific? Uh, yeah, it doesn't say. Just. Okay. By the way, this this app um, has, I think, two stars on the app ratings. <gasps> Are you pre- oh my gosh! An ad for a game. How do I get rid of the ad? You're pregnant. Pregnant twins. You're having twins. I'm oh, just as pregnant. My gosh. I thought there was. That's great. That's the whole app. That's all it does. Wait, it just says pregnant for anybody that puts their finger there and then shows them an ad for a video game. Well, what made me laugh was the reviews of it. I kind of got, I was like, wait, it says she's pregnant. I kind of believed it for a second, <laughs> but then it just told me I'm pregnant. No, it does not work. Um, obviously. Oh my God. But I have to read you. The reason I downloaded it was Why, because. How would it work? Well, Are you paying for that? No, this one is free. Obviously, you saw the ads on it. But the reviews on this one made me laugh really hard, which is why oh, I wanted to do it. This one said. At first it said I had triplets, then twins, then pregnant with a girl, then pregnant. And then suddenly I lost all my children and it said I was just fat, which makes sense because I'm 65 years old and I'm a man living in my mom's basement. (laughs) (laughs) Like the, the, all the, um, reviews I thought were really funny. I love people giving it one star because they like took it seriously. Like how how would they tell if you're pregnant from a fingerprint? No, they don't. It's fake. This one said, I did this for fun. And it literally said I was pregnant three times. And the first time says has, and the last time before I delete it says I'm fat, which I am not. I am a kid 12 to 13 years old. <gasps> <laughs> like I really enjoy it. Like the, the, all of the reviews are, are very, very funny. There are more, but, um, instead I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, unless we, you don't think we should love, but I thought, you know, one of the biggest questions that we get is like, do we want more kids? When are we having another kid? All of that, like a lot of questions about that. I know we've talked about adoption in the past and then obviously we did get pregnant. So I thought we could just, I mean, no exact direction in this conversation here, but since this is a pregnancy episode, I thought we'd talk a little bit as much as you're comfortable with talking about, you know, do we want another kid? 
what's what, Who's, do we are have you any asking plans? that seems like a personal this is, question yeah this is me asking eric i don't know the answer no i'm just kidding <laughs> we talk about this a lot but there are a lot of questions about this all the time my vlogs and my what main channel they, they want to know just like about us and if we want more kids and how we want that to happen um and all of that because you know we've talked about adoption in the past and i've brought that up because that is something that we were really really seriously considering before I got pregnant this year. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you listen back to everything we've recorded for this episode so far, like obviously pregnancy was pretty, the plan was to never be pregnant. It was again. pretty, pretty hard to experience and to, uh, for me to watch, mm -hmm. um, you go through. So, yeah. Um, but then, yeah, the plan was to never let that happen again. And then it happened. And then, uh, yeah. And, and then, uh, I mean, so have you met Flynn? Can you imagine two <laughs> of know. them? Like it sounds pretty like he's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And so when but, I when I did get pregnant, we were just so, um, you know, terrified. It was surprising, but like so like excited, like we were like really, really excited at the thought of, you know, Flynn is like the coolest person we've ever known. And so that we're like, we get to do an, we get to have another one of these things. Like, oh, my gosh, he's the coolest person ever. Like we get to have two coolest people ever. And so, um, we were super excited. And so, but the plan was never to have another one through my body and, uh, you know, but we do want another kid for sure. We're just, we're kind of open to whenever that happens, however it happens, whether that's, I think that's a good way of putting it. So yeah, we, to answer that question, we are, uh, excited to have another kid someday. We don't know when that would hap will happen or how that will happen. Um, whether that be through like my body or through adoption or whatever. We're not trying to make that happen. We're just kind of like, it'll happen when it happens. And we'll be stoked about that when that happens. Um, but speaking of awesome, an awesome child, Flynn Stockland is the coolest kid ever. Long. It's guys, been too long since we had a truck of the day. Flint's truck, truck of, of the day. day. We got a truck of the day, mother truckers. I think we might be doing a repeat truck of the day. I feel like he's already done this truck for truck of the day, but it's what he wanted to do. We're we talking we're, dumps. We're talking dumps. Let's, talk Let's dumps hear Flynn's truck, the truck of the day. Flynn's truck of the day. Oh, truck of the day. Truck of the day. Flynn's truck of the day. <laughs> What's the truck of the day today, Flynn? Uh, a dump truck. <gasps> a dump truck. Oh. <gasps> oh my goodness. What does a dump truck do? A dump truck. Okay, uh, a dump truck is, I think, generally yellow. It's black. It's black. I feel like I'm on the spot here. <laughs> yeah, now <laughs> Flynn is quizzing that, Eric. That was, a, that was a gotcha question. Can you sing the dump truck song? Dump truck, dump truck. That's a great song. I like that song. It is a little bulldozer song. You want the bulldozer song? No, they're talking the microphone. You're talking in the mic and phone. They're talking down the bulldozer. A bulldozer. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. What sound does a dump truck make? To push the button and it make go real go. Yeah. Does it go dump? Dump. Dump. Beautiful. Are you all done with the truck of the day? I'm done. Bye, truck of the day. Bye, bye, truck, <laughs> bye, bye, of, the truck day. of the day. Bye, bye, truck of the day. truck of the day. <laughs> Truck of the day was a dump truck, lovey. I feel like he's done Classic. that before. Maybe. Uh, he might have. I don't know. I love that there's a song that goes with dump truck or with all the trucks now. Like he always has to sing a song. It's very cute. He's all, yeah, he sings songs now mm -hmm. to himself. He's just kind of, and he'll do it to himself. Mm -hmm. And then he'll just hear, you like that song, Dada? Like yeah. He, <laughs> he'll sing. Yeah, like he'll just song, be like, Mama? Mom, you like that song? Like, yeah, like, I know. I think so it's the sweetest cute. thing. It's the best. He made me sing him a truck song the other day. And he goes, I like that song, Dada. <laughs> that was like the best. I was like, okay, thank you. Like, He's so funny. You know, people have commented on how um, we call him, we've always called him Baby Flynn. Like it was always like, oh, did you go get the baby? Can you watch the baby? You know, you, you reference your baby as baby. The baby, it's Flynn, but also like the baby. It's yeah, like, he caught on to and that. And he caught on to that. When he started talking, he started going, what he would say is, baby do, 
meaning like, I want to try. Can I have a turn? So that's how that started is he would go, baby do baby do and we go yeah baby can do baby can try and and so because we talked that way with him and he started that conversation that way he now thinks his name is baby he thinks that it's yeah he thinks his name is mr baby flynn he thinks it's yeah if you ask him what his name is he says mr baby and sometimes he'll say mr baby flynn and i when i was pregnant for a very short time this year i had a little moment where i was like oh no we need to now switch it and we do anyway i mean it's not his name but like he needs to not call himself baby because now we're going to have like a baby and he's not the baby. And we needed to get him to understand that like there's a new baby coming. And um, yeah, that was a big worry of mine for that period of time was was what how it would affect him. Flynn. And, yeah, and everything. I think he would be so good. He's like, of course, so of course, of course. Yeah. Wonderful but like with it, everyone. Yeah. Like he just wants everyone to feel included and he loves being around other people and and sharing. Like He's such a good little boy. Like I feel like. Um, he'd be really, he'd be such a good brother. He'd be very caring and, um, he's, and he just want to be, I think his biggest frustration with a sibling would be like, if they ever didn't want to play with him 24 seven, like how he's with us, he's like, what are you doing? We are playing trucks all day today. Like how on earth could you want to do anything else? You know what I mean? Like, I think that's, that would be his biggest issue. Um, is if the sibling didn't want to play trucks with him 24 seven. Yeah. Cause that's his only issue with us. I feel right now. Is if we do anything other than I, play that's trucks with him. That's an interesting thought, like an eventual, eventual uh, sibling for him. And that was like, yeah, trucks, yeah. Not, inter- not interested. I'm more into like this other niche, like right. category of things. And like, and just his reaction would be like. Well, that's how Rachel and I were. Like, yeah, were, did you get like with sure. your siblings? Was it like that? Like for me and Rachel, we were complete opposites. We had nothing. Nothing was similar. Like we had none, none of the same interests. Nothing. I think we all looked up to the older and wanted to be, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like into the, the dinosaurs and all that. Yeah. We so all had like, kind of the same like similar, I think similar interests. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I did not experience that with Rachel. We did not, nothing, nothing we could play together. Nothing we could do together. It was like, I mean, could not have been more opposite if we tried. Mm-hmm. So we did not share that. But yeah, I wonder if that would happen if we, you know, if slash when we ever have another kid, if, if they're going to be completely opposite of Flynn or exactly like him, I'm, I'm eager to find that out. Me It'll too. be interesting. Um, sounds fun. Sounds so fun. Uh, but yeah, if, if you guys want more information on that journey of, uh, you know, pregnancy and what I experienced earlier this year with, um, the pregnancy and the miscarriage or our future journeys of all these other things. It is a lot of that's on my vlog channel late at night. I will talk about, uh, my experiences and whatnot come from what word miscarriage. You know, I don't know. Should we look that up? Yeah. Look it up. I, I keep, yeah, it's, uh, it affects, it's a very affecting word. It affects me that word. Every time I hear it, I kind of like twinge, um, And I just kind of wondered if you knew why it is called that. The term miscarriage is comprised of two words. Miss, meaning mistakenly, wrongingly, or badly. And carriage, a means of conveyance. While the carriage of the term miscarriage is reasonably accurate, the miss portion is inaccurate and potentially harmful. Most miscarriages do not represent a mistaken, wrong, or bad action on the part of the woman's body. Most are caused by spontaneous chromosomal anomalies that render human development impossible and do not relate to inherited genetic problems. So this um, thing is this thing I'm reading right now is saying we need to change the term. We need to change it because miscarriage implies that the woman did something wrong, which is not the case um, in most situations. All right. So we didn't mean to like go down that path, but here we are. <laughs> um, this was an interesting and fun episode for me. I'm excited for the rest of this month. Next week is Haters Back Off. Make sure to tune in and watch the second episode of Haters Back Off so that you are up to date. Then we're doing the musical episode and the in-laws. We're going to end on a wonderful song what's a, what's cover. What's the musical episode going to be? You'll see. We're going to end on a wonderful cover by some of you. Thank you for all of your covers. We love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to all the things. We love you. Ha, <laughs> ha,
you can relax. Colleen and Eric have a podcast. The world is scary and we're locked in our home. But now we have big microphones. So you can relax. That's the name of our podcast.